Hello there, everyone. Welcome to episode number 623 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. My guest this week is WePower founder and CEO, Larry Richenstein. Larry and I are chatting all about WePower's innovative energy harvesting technology, the industries that could take advantage of this technology, and the variety of products offered by WePower. Also this week, I investigate forest 4.0, a new intelligent forest data processing model that incorporates IoT, AI, and blockchain technologies that could enable real-time monitoring of forest conditions, sustainable resource accounting, and a more transparent forest governance model. So before we head out into the forest, please welcome Larry to Fish Fry. Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Good to be here. Excellent. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, what is WePower Technologies all about? We are in the energy harvesting business. And what that means is that we harvest energy, power, electric power, from the movement of our devices. So basically what happens, you can turn a knob, pull a switch, push a switch, flip a switch, push a button, any of those movements, we can harvest that movement, the kinetic energy from that movement, and turn it into electricity to be able to send signals like remote control devices would send, for example, without the need for any batteries ever. So the key here in We Power Technologies and our GEMS energy harvesting technology is the idea of eliminating batteries in a slew of electronic devices that we all use every day. So, Larry, We Power has an incredibly interesting energy harvesting technology at the heart of your solution. So talk to me about that. Sure. Thank you. So the idea here is, and, and I did not take physics in high school, but For those of uh, your listeners that have, they know about Faraday's law. And basically what that says, if you take a magnet and put it through a copper coil, you will harvest the energy from that movement of the magnet through the copper coil. We do that in a patented way with a number of devices. We have three different energy harvesting generators that can be used for different applications. But basically what we're doing is removing that magnet through a copper coil in a patented way that enables us to get more energy out of such a movement than any company has ever been able to get previously. And so our big differentiator is the fact that with these small movements, we can harvest enough energy to do things that no one's ever been able to do before and eliminate the wasteful batteries that have been plaguing, I think, our industry for years. So what kind of products does we power offer? Right. So As a company, we are a business-to-business, B2B licensing company. So our real goal is not to build products, but to license our technology as components in other people's products. And when I started this company, you know, five and a half, six years ago, I figured, oh, this is going to be easy. You know, everyone's going to understand what we're doing and we're going to have great success. Well, it took a lot longer than I thought it would, which is typical in startups. But also what we found is that the potential licensees or customers for our technology don't have as much of an imagination perhaps as I do. So what we've had to do is develop and design from scratch a couple of reference products that demonstrate our technology in a way that really shows its uniqueness and its value proposition. The first of those products is a wireless battery-free water sensor. And basically, if you look at water sensors today, there's two types. One that's laying on the ground and is connected in your mechanical room, usually to the control panel somewhere from your alarm system or your electric switch boxes. And it's a little blue pad that lays on the ground in the mechanical room. So if there's a water leak from the water heater or any other kind of leak, 
it would be announced right away into the alarm system, and that's a wired one. They also have wireless ones that are usually battery operated and have a beeping sound that go out with it. So if you're close enough to the basement and if you're home, you'll hear it. Of course, the problem is, is you can put it downstairs in your basement and a year later when there is water, the batteries are dead and you don't get any signal whatsoever or you're out to lunch and you don't know that what's going on either. So our device is wireless and can be in whatever technology hub you have. So for example, our first water sensor coming out will be a Z-Wave product, which you know is a big platform in the smart home space. And that device will be able to lay on the ground for as many years as it takes till the first time it gets wet. And the first time it gets wet, even 20 years from now, without any batteries, it'll be able to detect the water and transmit to your hub in your smart home that there is a leak. And then, of course, what would normally happen, you'd get a message, text, or an email on your phone saying that there's a leak at the house. So that was one of the products that we've done. And we had a great response to that product. And we'll be shipping it this summer through a variety of companies that have told us they will be purchasing it under their brands. So that's one concept of our technology being used. And the other one that we did as a reference product is a light controller. So in the United States, we have a lot of light switches that are connected to the lights overhead with copper wires. People are trying to get away from that copper wiring because it's expensive and inefficient, and they're trying to go wireless. And in Europe, that's been a trend that's been going on for years. But again, what's happened is that the batteries have become a problem, and the EU has just outlawed batteries in wireless lighting controllers or light switches beginning in August 27. So we have a huge market for that. And we've built a reference light switch that's wireless and batteryless and can control a whole host of different lighting opportunities without, again, any need for a battery. And we've gotten a phenomenal response for that. And it will be shipping later this year through a number of companies that are going to license the technology from us. That's super cool. Now, Larry, I would imagine that your technology could make an impact in a lot of different industries. I certainly agree with you on that. And, you know, when we were at CES this year, the whole back of the booth we dedicated to showing applications. Because again, I have an imagination. I've been living with energy harvesting now for almost six years, but it's kind of hard to get everyone else to have that imagination. So we started showing applications in automotive, in industrial applications. I mean, military applications. There's there's so many use cases for this. And I think once people see these first couple products that I mentioned, the water sensor and the light switch, it's going to spur more imagination about how can we get rid of batteries in a whole slew of electronic devices. Larry, tell me more about CES this year. You guys made quite a splash. So talk to me about the experience of this year's show. It was a great show. Of course, I've been going to CES since it almost started. My father was in the industry, so I went to my first CES show in 1968, which was the second CES show. And I, and that is my favorite show. I've launched four companies at CES, including WePower three years ago. And this show was nothing short of spectacular. I mean, we obviously had a booth that uh, got a lot of play. We had a lot of people who were planning appointments anyway into the booth, but we had a lot of walk-in traffic that was really excellent. And what we've seen this year over prior years that we've been there is that People are finally recognizing that the time has come for this technology. And whereas people were talking about, well, in the future, you could do this, you could do that. We had people coming in with real world situations that they're experiencing right now, issues that they have in their products and talking to us about applications on how we can solve those problems with battery free energy. It was really a great show. Always loved being at CES. That is fantastic. I love that. All right, Larry, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Uh, 
Probably sushi. I, I'd probably go for like really high end sushi in uh, one of the old restaurants I used to eat in Hong Kong or even uh, I can go to California to Matsuhisa, which I always liked. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big on sushi and uh, I like the exotic stuff because having traveled to the Far East for my whole career, I've really developed a, uh, a love and a good taste for that uh, food. Chinese buy up there also, of course. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Well, Larry, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. It was good talking with you, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. Let's talk about Forest Ford Auto. <laughs> this is an innovative new program that combines blockchain, IoT, and AI that could revolutionize how we monitor and govern our forests. So, this study that involved two universities in Lithuania and one university in Sweden is looking to not only monitor our forests in real time, but also enable sustainable resource accounting and help us govern our forests in a more transparent way. Okay, so Forest Fordado includes several layers, the first being data acquisition and management. Wireless sensor networks with a variety of different IoT devices could measure things like temperature, tree sap, and soil moisture, and would all be connected by data transmission. Because, as a professor in this study from KTU in Lithuania points out, this way nobody has to go into the forest and take measurements manually. So, one of these IoT devices in the forest 4.0 system would be a solution of sensors that looks like a birdhouse, which would be installed in trees. And then these sensors would send data back to a central system where it would be analyzed by AI algorithms within the data analysis layer. Another part of this monitoring system would be cameras as well. Lead author of the associated research paper from KTU says this about this aspect of Forest 4.0. By analyzing camera images and looking at, for example, browning needles, the IoT can detect the impact of insects on trees, identify disease through spots on leaves, and by incorporating sounds, it can indicate illegal logging. So, this data analysis layer within Forest 4.0 is really important because its findings could be used to investigate forest health, biodiversity, monitor fire risks, and offer protection against pests and diseases. The ultimate goal of Forest 4.0, according to this multinational team, is to revolutionize forest management by introducing new technologies that can improve the efficiency, sustainability, and profitability of forest businesses, while also optimizing resource use, reducing waste, and facilitating decision-making. Another important aspect of Forest 4.0 is supply chain traceability management. And this is actually where blockchain technology comes in. They explain this aspect of the solution like this. The technology provides a transparent, secure, and unchangeable record of everything that happens to the forest and its production reduces illegal logging and ensures sustainable practices. All right, so Forest 4.0, here we come. Well, not so fast. Even though there are a lot of benefits, there are a fair amount of challenges with this solution as well. There will be a high initial investment, and the use of decentralized blockchain technology requires a high level of trust from the users. But this team contends that eventually lower cost solutions could be used for the IoT components, and fintech technology could also help overcome the hesitation around the blockchain element. But the motivation behind Forest 4.0 is awesome. They explain it like this. 
Smart forest management is about caring for the future of nature. It is like the fourth industrial revolution in forestry, with the goal of a non-flammable, lush forest full of animals. Super cool, right? Well, folks, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. If you'd like more information about WePower or Forest 4.0, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow me or us on LinkedIn. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of March 14th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.